Um, today we're going to talk about overhead work. So our winter focus is going to be all things overhead. And uh, when I say all things overhead, I mean just getting into a nice stacked overhead position, um, pressing things overhead, pulling from overhead down. So your vertical uh, pushes, your vertical pulls, um, working on negative pull-ups. So this is uh, this winter we're going to spend a lot of time trying to build some sort of overhead pulling strength. Uh, whether it's through negatives or actively through doing pull-ups. We're going to work on mobility. We're going to work on stability. Pretty much we're going to work on anything we can that's going to help people uh, to be stronger in this position and be stronger pulling themselves out of that position. Um, before we get into any specifics, I was going to point out most of us are not physios. We're not doctors. So um, because shoulder joints are so complicated, you have to be mindful and you have to be humble about that. Um, most of us will not be in a position where we can make any kind of diagnosis for any kind of uh, overhead impingement or overhead pain or shoulder pain, et cetera. Um, so be mindful of that. And then also um, always take previous injuries into account or any sort of congenital or uh, structural or really any other contraindications. So, um, you know, we have a client, for example, who has trouble extending their elbow at all. And uh, when they were younger, um, I think they got in a rugby accident or something like that. And um, they broke probably some kind of, I don't know, tuberosity or something here uh, that makes it really hard for them to extend. They're just not really gonna have leverage anymore. So it's really outside of our remit to try to get somebody who can't fully extend their elbow to fully extend their elbow. We can, we can expose them to movements where they can work on extension. We can kind of stretch and add a bit of mobility and things like that. And there's a very good chance that over time you could increase their range of motion, but it's nothing that you should state authoritatively. And if you find someone who has a history of injury or history of dislocations or whatever, you should go ahead and refer them to, uh, to a physio that you've worked with in the past, someone who's uh, pro exercise and pro movement and can work with you to come up with a game plan to improve your clients over time. So we're going to be spending a lot of time here coaching this winter uh, talking about the overhead position. And one of the first things we want to establish with our clients is an overhead checklist. Does this look good? Yes or no? Does your position A look good? Does your position B look good? Um, so I was doing the checklist with three points, but actually I realized it's really just two main points. Um, and uh, the first one is you just need to be mindful of uh, the most common compensation, which is going to be uh, going into lumbar extension. Um, so you want to make sure your clients have their abs tight, their spine is neutral, and their ribs are in. The reason this is such a common compensation is if you have people with limited flexion, and they only get their hands about here, but they know their hands are supposed to be overhead, a lot of times people will compensate by sort of leaning back. So now it looks like my hands are overhead, but actually all that movement is happening through the spine. So you want to, um, if you're looking at the front, you want to see are the ribs ex extended, are the ribs sort of coming out here, and are you getting that sort of curvy banana back? If so, you want to cue uh, tight abs, neutral spine. Uh, you can work with people through planks or through hollow body work or a bunch of other things to show them what that means. Establish uh, with the client that they know what a neutral spine feels like. They know what it feels for them to contract their abs and keep everything neutral. Um, that's going to help with that. So then when uh, peer coaching is happening, if you see somebody going into extension, the partner can cue them back. They can say abs tight. They can say ribs in. They can say stand tall. Um, no banana back, whatever cue is meaningful for that person to get them to correct it. So we can make sure that any of the overhead work we're doing, we're doing with a neutral spine and we're not compensating with any kind of extension or any other kind of weird movements that you might see along the spine. Um, that's main point number one. Main point number two is uh, you want to make sure everybody understands what we're talking about when we're talking about stacked joints. Uh, we want to make sure the elbows are straight and we're seeing vertical lines. Um, so one of the most common things you'll see is just people have uh, bent elbows and sometimes if you just tell them to straighten out their elbow, reach for the sky, um, pull yourself tall, imagine that somebody's pulling on your wrist, imagine you're holding onto some helium balloons, whatever you need to get uh, from here to there. Um, so that'll be the big one is going to be a straight elbow for a lot of people and that'll fix a lot of issues. But then uh, just the concept of joints being stacked. So you want to make sure that if we're standing that your wrist is on top of your elbow your elbow is on top of your shoulder, your shoulder is uh, on top of your hip joint, your hip joints on top of your knees and top of your ankles, that nice stacked line of joints right there. Um, 
you also want to make sure that um, people are straight if you're looking at them sagittally and from uh, frontal. So for example, um, if you're standing from, from the side, you might say, okay, well, their shoulders don't look like they're in the right position. But when you look at from the frontal position, you can see I'm not stacked. My wrist is all the way out here. I need to bring it back over just like that. Similarly, if you're looking at me from the front, you, this might look good because you don't see any kind of frontal deviation. But then you look at me from the side and you can see that sure enough, my shoulder's not in full flexion. Um, so you want to uh, ensure that all the clients and their peer coaching, they know to walk around and look at different angles when they're uh, trying to find any issues. And the other cue or the other concept is just vertical lines. And this, this will cover a few things, okay? You'll see a lot of uh, times people, for some reason, when they're in overhead position, for some reason, they'll crook their neck and they'll try to glue their ear uh, to their humerus, okay? You want to make sure their neck is straight so their neck is stacked. The other compensation you might see, you might see some lateral compensations where sometimes people will sort of, trying to get overhead, they'll go into a kind of lateral flexion at the spine. So you just want to make sure your center line is nice and stacked as well. So you might want to think your nose, your chin, um, you know, going over straight line all the way down. Um, so just check for that and see if there's any aberration there. Um, so do the checklist with the clients and first just go ahead and, and do it standing. All right, see everything looks there. Can they do it with both arms? Yes or no, go through the checklist. Go ahead and check them as well uh, when they're kneeling. Um, so in a half kneeling position, um, or a lunging position, you want to check there. Um, does this look good? Or you'll see quite a lot when people all of a sudden, when they're in the double overhead position, they start lunging, they'll start getting pulled forward here. So it's going to be a different kind of aberration. They're going to go into a flexion here. Could be tight lats, could be some other core stability issue. But can they uh, maintain a nice overhead position from the half kneeling or bottom of lunge position? So you want to check the unweighted standing with both hands. Uh, so dual overhead, you want to check unweighted half kneeling or lunge. And then also another one that's going to be really, really useful is going to be a waiter's walk. So we've been doing 20 meter uh, waiter's walks, alternating partners. So one partner walks 20 meters out with one arm. At the end of the 20 meters, they switch hands and they come back. The whole time their partner's checking, okay, straighten out your elbow, abs tight, stand straight, uh, you know, neck neutral, etc. They're giving them different cues and just ensuring that they're not uh, falling into a sort of sloppy or loose position. So with the overhead walk, um, we'll go ahead and grab this and we'll just do a little walk with it. All right, so uh, from here, make sure all your clients know how to do um, a spear grip um, or a through grip position. When they pop up overhead, you just want to ensure that their wrist is in a comfortable position and their wrist is vertical. Uh, you want to make sure that the kettlebell is running parallel with their thumb so the end of the kettlebell hits the fleshy part of their palm pop it up overhead and we're just walking and we're looking and if you ever see this start to see a deviation so if you start to see this you could say um you know reach for the sky or you could say um elbows to ears and then you're going and maybe their elbow starts to bend reach for the sky straighten out if they start to twist here you say make the spine tall stand tall if your neck starts to uh, crook a little bit you can say neck neutral just constantly giving them little cues to ensure that they're always maintaining this nice overhead position. Eventually, we want to get people where the overhead position is like a resting position. Um, I'm always, I always forget how difficult people can find an overhead position, especially when they're new uh, to Wild Strong. You'll see a lot of people because they think this is their overhead position, and they'll take a few steps, and every single time they step, there'll be a bounce, and they have to compensate. And already, after a few seconds, I'm getting much more tired here than going back here, getting my joints locked, getting my joints stacked, where I could keep this, you know, up overhead for quite a long time. But the moment I start to lose that stack position, it's gonna become harder and harder and harder and harder and harder until it collapses. Um, so uh, peer coaching is really important here because a lot of people won't have the kinesthetic awareness uh, to check themselves. It's really important that you have a second eye on them as we're progressing the overhead position. While the peer coaching is happening, um, the partners will be checking each other, seeing everything looks, cueing each other, noticing any issues. Uh, they should be thinking about, do they see any weird compensations? You know, are you arching the back? Is there any kind of lateral flexion? Any weird twisting, corkscrewing in the body? Does everything look stacked? And if things, if things don't feel right, one of the questions you can ask your partner is, um, where do you feel restricted? Where do you feel tight? Especially in the lunging position. You know, if you have somebody who's doing the lunge, 
and they pull forward and say, oh, why are you pulling forward there? Can you open up? No. Where do you feel tight? Ah, I feel tight here. Okay. Well, maybe there's some sort of issue with the lats, okay? Or, um, you know, if somebody's having trouble getting their elbows straight, okay, where do you feel tight? Oh, along here. Oh, well, maybe that's bicep. Um, so even if we don't know what the muscles are, we can get a basic idea of the region where the restriction is coming from. So that means that maybe we can do some extra work, some mobilizations, uh, things like that. Um, when I'm talking about mobilization, I'm just going to use the term generally, general, general mobilizing. Uh, could this be stretching? Yep, it could just be nice passive stretching. Um, it could also be something uh, like neurofacilitation, so sort of getting the restricted muscles uh, tired and allowing your nervous system to open up a little bit. Uh, you don't have to talk about neurofacilitation with your clients. You can just have them do different movements and they can do a test retest. Um, both of those can show immediate results. It's amazing. You'll have people who can't do an overhead and then you just have them do a passive stretch or a hang or something for a few sets of maybe 30, 40 seconds and they come back and all of a sudden they'll have a nice overhead position. Um, for long-term stuff, we want to think about uh, strength in the overhead pattern. Um, so we want to think about, well, what do we need to achieve that overhead pattern? Are those muscles not strong enough? Is there some sort of imbalance? Perhaps um, the antagonistic muscles are too tight or they're too strong it's hard to overcome so can we just strengthen that pattern and over time maybe your body will just correct itself without focusing on any specific muscles you know maybe if we just do enough pressing overhead maybe if we spend enough time in our overhead waiters carries your body will just naturally get better at it and the answer is that it will if you have people do waiter carries once or twice a week i guarantee you their overhead position is going to be better in a month I mean, it's just, a, it's just a matter of learning and creating awareness when they're doing it. So um, with a combination of those and uh, classes over the winter, we'll probably see a really, really quick uh, progression. And now I'm going to show you uh, some of the things we'll do. All right, so one of the things we're going to spend a lot of time this winter is going to be uh, negative pull-ups. Okay, so both, um, let's see. <laughs> both uh, pronated and supinated. Um, I prefer pronated uh, generally because I feel like it opens up my shoulders more um, and I feel like it gets my lats more. I find that when I do supinated, I don't really like the feeling of being in that internally rotated uh, position or I guess the supinated position. It just doesn't feel good on my shoulders. So for me, I prefer this. Um, you might have a lot of people who can't do any sort of negative from a pronated position. So maybe we can start building up some muscles supinated if they want, and then we can move over to uh, pronated. It also depends what people's goals are. Um, some people, um, if they, if they want to get their first pull up, chances are they're going to be stronger, maybe in a chin up with their hands facing their body. Um, some people might be stronger in the opposite direction. So if people have a preference for it, unless you have a specific reason, to say, no, I want you to be in this position or this position, you can allow them to focus on one over the course of the season um, if that's gonna get them closer to some kind of chin over the bar uh, movement. So uh, there's lots of things we can do. Uh, we definitely wanna work on some negatives. Um, I think it's good to work on uh, passive hangs, active hangs, supported hangs, unsupported hangs. All these things are gonna work together. So one of the things that I'll do sometimes is um, I'll do a negative, into a uh, free hand, uh, free hang, into a foot supported hang. So I'll show you that. This is just a little bit too tall for me. I can just get my toes on it, so it'll be good enough. Um, so I'm gonna jump into a negative. I'm gonna talk about controlled negative. Um, when we finish up the negative, I'm gonna talk about uh, just a, a free hang, unsupported hang, and then I'm gonna talk about a supported hang. So I'm gonna jump up there. I'm gonna go like this and there we are. Okay, so when we do our negatives, one of the key things you want to think about is you don't want to hold it isometrically. You do want to allow everything to come down slowly, okay? And there's going to be some regions where you're just going to feel weaker. So as my humerus approaches parallel, I'm going to feel much weaker here than at other points. So I've got my negative. Now, let's say um, we're trying to hold for 45 seconds. Let's say I did that for 10 seconds. Then maybe I've got about 20 seconds of a free hang in me right here. So I'm just hanging, just letting it happen. Now, if I get tired, I can let my feet touch the ground and now I can do a toe supported hang, all right? Um, for most people, you'll probably wanna get something to support them a little bit. These chances are the bars will be too high for most people to do a comfortable one. 
you can get a lot of control on this. So I can either use my feet a lot and have almost no strain in my upper body, or I can reduce the support and I can get uh, more tension in my upper body. And just hanging is going to be really beneficial for a lot of people. It's just going to open up their shoulders. It's going to give them a better position. They're not going to spend much time here. And the important thing is they just hang out and they breathe and they're relaxed and their body gets used to that position and your nervous system starts to say, okay, it's okay to be up here. And over time, that's really gonna help increase your range of motion. So uh, if you do a combination of these, you're gonna get uh, some benefit. Now I was talking about passive hang. Um, and a passive hang is exactly what it sounds like. It's just hanging passively like this. I'm not trying to do anything. There's a lot of room for active hang stuff, um, both in terms of hollow body progression and also in terms of strengthening your lats um, and your scapula and all sorts of muscles up there. So um, it's worth talking about both of these. Uh, for most people right now, we're just gonna be focusing on just their overhead position. But as your clients get more advanced, you can start talking to them about how they can use their core because eventually, if they wanna move towards uh, gymnastic kip or parkour or stuff like that, we're really gonna want to start strengthening their abs here. So one of the easiest, well, one of the best ways we can do it is to encourage a hollow body hold while they're in the hanging position. So if I jump up here, instead of just keeping everything floppy here, I'll put toes together, abs tight, holding this position. And I'm actually gonna engage my lats a little bit too when I'm doing this. So this right here has really active lat engagement, really active ab engagement. And building this strength here is really gonna help me if I wanna do my kips or other gymnastics movements down the road. Uh, so uh, down the road, getting that, and that's also gonna help strengthen the lats, which is gonna help people uh, achieve their pronated pull-ups. The other thing, um, if people have trouble doing any kind of movement at the elbows, uh, if their biceps aren't quite strong enough, you can just spend time on lats and scapular control. So if people aren't quite ready to any kind of concentric movement, you can just have them work on their scout push-up. So just from here, from a hang, and all of a sudden, I'm just gonna cue you know, bring your head to the bar, bring your shoulder blades down. And all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to achieve movement through my scapula and then I can do an isometric hold on that. So different combinations of that will start strengthening the body from different angles and that'll start filling in all the little gaps that people have so they can gradually move towards getting their pull-ups or some sort of variation of a vertical pull. Okay. Um, one stretch or movement that I really like to pair with the negatives, and this makes a really good partner AB workout, is a uh, passive overhead stretch, kneeling overhead stretch. Loads of variations on this. Um, I just show you, I'll show you the one that I do, lots of other ways to do it. This one, I'm just gonna get into a kneeling position. Sometimes you'll see people do elbows. I just, I just have my hands flop over. I, I like to do this one relaxed, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm in a comfortable position. I'm just gonna let gravity do its thing. Now I want to make sure my back doesn't hyperextend here because I want to ensure that I'm really getting proper overhead position in the way I want to achieve um, when I'm holding weight. So I'm going to keep my abs tight and my spine neutral. I'm just going to hang out here. I'm just going to let gravity do its thing. See where I feel tight. I can feel I'm slightly tighter in my left shoulder today. I'm just going to hang out here and just breathe and gradually you'll feel it open up. So maybe do 45 seconds here, 45 seconds on negatives back and forth something like that. But there's another thing we can do. We can do an active stretch. We can start doing uh, PNF, so uh, proprioceptive neurofacilitation, where if I actively push against this, okay, using um, my extension muscles, like my lats and everything like that, and then I relax, I can get a slightly deeper stretch. So this is the standard. There's lots of prescriptions. You do 10 second hold, five second relax. It doesn't really matter. It's all gonna give you the same benefit. So I'll do like a 10 second hold, stretch, relax. Um, so exactly as I was doing before, my abs are gonna be tight, my spine's gonna be neutral, but instead of just passively doing this now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actively gonna push down with these muscles and really try to push against this for about, let's say, 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna relax and I'll feel, um, I'll feel everything open up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go on this and I'm gonna start pushing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and relax. Hang out here for a few seconds. Get my arms around. Okay, my, my spine is neut uh, neutral. I'll do one more set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, and relax. And just like all PNF stretching, when you do it, it pretty much feels like magic because all of a sudden it's just telling your body, yeah, I can do this, it's safe, I can open up. And you'll see people in three bouts of PNF stretching all of a sudden get four, five, six degrees of range of motion just by uh, doing the stretch relax pattern. So you can do this with this. Um, you can also do it with dowels. There's actually a lot of really good dowel stretches, so we'll show you those. Okay, uh, we've got a lot of dowels here. Most of them are just old bits of rakes or brooms and stuff where uh, they've broken or they start to rot. So I just saw the rotten part off and now I've got a perfectly good stick. You can use uh, PVC, plastic, whatever. You can buy a special stretching stick, but these are generally free. You can also find packs of uh, 20 wooden dowels online for, for very cheap. And I just like using the wood a little bit. It's a little bit stronger than the PVC. It feels better in the hand. Um, but Anyway, it doesn't need anything special. Uh, the dowels are really great because they can do all kinds of sh uh, shoulder stretches and mobility uh, movements that'd be really, really hard to do on your own or just with a partner. There's a lot of classics. One of the classic is the shoulder pass-through. Um, when you do the pass-through, same thing we've been talking about, ensure that you have a neutral spine, abs tight, ribs in. A lot of times people will have that tendency to go back into extension, so make sure your abs are tight, your hips are neutral when they're doing this. And this one, you just start off nice and gentle. Okay, I want to keep my elbows straight and I'm just passing through, actively keeping my abs tight. Maybe I do five, six, seven, and nine passes. And when I feel that my shoulders have opened up at that angle, all I do is I just bring my hands in about a half centimeter on each side, not very much. Do a few more. Go back and forth so I can, I can feel my left bicep is quite tight. Then I'll do a few more. Good. Come in a little bit more, bring my hands in about another centimeter or so, and just keep on doing this. So I can feel my elbows want to bend now. But that is a really easy movement. As soon as you do it, your shoulders are going to feel good. It's going to help with stress. It just really opens everything up. That's just a classic thing. Uh, you can really do that every single day, and people benefit from it. People could use a broom. They could do it at home. Uh, while they're sitting in the office, they could just get up every uh, hour or so and do it, and it's a real big bang for buck uh, movement. After that, we've got a few other ones. One of the ones I, I quite like are ski poles, and um, you can do this one either as a PNF stretch, or you can do it as a passive stretch. So just get your pole stick in front of you, almost like you're a skier uh, trying to push off. And you can do it passively. You can just hang out here and just feel a stretch because this one's unilateral. You can really focus on the shoulder that you need to. You can also do an active, um, you know, stretch, relax one. So uh, I can really try to engage my lats right here, really push down and then relax, engage my lats, push down, relax. That's a really nice one. Do a few of those on each side. That'll help with your overhead position. Um, one that I quite like for people who have tight lats, um, if you see a lot of people kind of folding forward in their overhead squats or their lunges, is uh, the ninja sword. So with the ninja sword, you, uh, I'm going to start with my left hand and put it behind here like I'm drawing a sword like this. Get my other hand, I'll put it behind here. So now I'm in this position. With this one, I'm going to push forward. So push forward. I'm going to lean into it. And if I lean forward, if I contract my abs and lean to my right side while pushing forward with my right hand, this is going to create a really intense, really deep stretch all along my side. So it's gonna get my lats and all those other nice muscles that run along the side of your spine. Uh, and this feels really, really good. You can do it isometrically, you can play around with it, you can try leaning in different angles, you're just gonna get a nice stretch um, right there. That's a really nice one. Another one I do quite a lot of is just behind the head presses. This you can generally do at high rep. When you do about 20 of those, you'll start to feel a really nice burn along here uh, that just sort of feels like it opens you up as well. There's lots of other things we can do as well. Um, but the main goal is just that you just try to hit from different angles. Um, like I said, most, most of the restrictions, um, the ones that are easy wins will probably come the lats or the biceps. So there's some uh, bicep stretches we can do. I can show you those in another day. Um, but just remember that shoulders are really complicated. Uh, don't do anything too intense that's going to stress people or uh, injure them but just try to attack mobility from different angles. And over a few months, you'll just sort of feel that people uh, just improve like magic. Um, 
So that's going to be our winter focus and uh, hopefully everyone's going to be really strong and mobile come spring.